Thomas Jefferson's library became the foundation of the modern day Library of Congress. And like Jefferson, we today still collect universally in all languages. Like Jefferson, we attempt to document in a very expansive and universal fashion the sum of all human endeavor. So what started as Thomas Jefferson's world has become in fact the foundation for the Library of Congress, the largest library in the world, a library that's fundamentally built on, I would say, the principle that Jefferson would most agree upon, which is that access to knowledge, free access to knowledge is fundamentally important not only for the governed, but the governors. Thomas Jefferson was a man of the Enlightenment and very much believed that uh, embracing Enlightenment ideals was necessary to achieve a certain level of perfectibility. And so he organizes his collection into memory, reason, imagination, which he called history, philosophy, and fine arts. He takes those three main branches and then subdivides his collection into all total 44 chapters. So history, for example, starts with ancient history and then marches through modernity, uh, modern Europe, modern England, modern France, and then goes to what seemed like a perfectly natural next move for Jefferson, which is physical history. And so suddenly you're, you're bumping into geology, zoology, the history of the planet. History ends with chapter 15, which is called Technical Arts, which is really the sort of junk drawer of Jefferson's collection. Beekeeping, bookkeeping, brewing, embroidery, it's a hodgepodge of applied science and probably, at least in my mind, is the area that's probably closest to Jefferson's heart as a planter and as a, the owner of Monticello. He liked to tinker. Unfortunately, in the 1851 Capitol fire, the fire that destroyed two-thirds of Jefferson's books, the entire technical arts section was destroyed save one volume, one title, the works and essays of Benjamin Count Rumford. Of all the things to survive uh, technical arts, this is a perfect example. Philosophy covers law, morality, and ethics, and of course in the world of Jefferson covers the literature of the Bible. In fact, all sacred works fall under moral philosophy as opposed to religion. Thomas Jefferson's copy of the Quran. This is a 1764 printing. We know that Jefferson purchased this in Williamsburg as a student and likely acquired it because uh, the Quran is often listed in 18th century law books as Arabic law here. is a volume that's made out of a Latin edition of Tacitus and a Spanish edition of Tacitus. Jefferson acquired two different books, had them cut apart, and then interleaved them so that he could use his Latin, which was very firm, to teach himself Spanish. Jefferson is very mute with his books. He doesn't write in them. He doesn't mark passages that might be useful. We don't have passages that say, good idea, use in the Declaration of Independence. But he does nonetheless indicate ownership whenever possible. At the bottoms of some pages in 18th century books, you will find capital letters, although some cases, small case, depending on how big the book is. These are called signatures. These are there uh, in part to help the binder put the book together. Jefferson will go and find the T signature and next to it, in very distinctive hand, in very distinctive brown-red ink, write a J for TJ. Each one of his books has this small, discreet, very endearing way of marking his books.